Okay, you're in the market to buy LED bulbs. You even know exactly what type, say an LED A19, to replace your current 40 watt incandescent bulb in your ceiling. You're going to have plenty of LED bulbs to choose from, maybe even too many to choose from. When I'm comparing LED bulbs, I first put them into different categories, to compare apples with apples. UL or not UL. The UL logo is a mark on the bulb, also seen as ETL or CSA and some other marks, to let you know it has passed safety testing in the US. It isn't compulsory and non-UL bulbs are certainly not necessarily dangerous. And when you're replacing light bulbs in your own home, you're entitled to swap them with non-UL bulbs. Why is this important? Because UL testing costs a lot of money and those manufacturers that do not apply for UL often sell their bulbs at cheaper prices. So to compare apples with apples, if UL testing is something important to you, then compare only those with UL approval. If not, then look for non-UL bulbs for they are usually cheaper. The next important thing to consider is the type of LED chip used. The quality of the LED chip plays a big role in the performance of the LED light bulb. Better chips last longer and deteriorate less over time, both for light output and light quality. But you pay more for that quality. LED bulb makers all buy their LED chips from LED chip makers. In the case of bulb makers like Philips and Cree, that is in-house from their very own LED chip department. The general opinion is that Cree USA makes the best LED chips in the world. They were the first and have continually spent the most money on research and development of LED chip technology. The good tier 2 chip makers are companies like Philips, Samsung, LG and Nichia. Then lastly you have the budget no-name makers from China and Taiwan. Not to say these chip makers all produce poor quality, but they are cheap and you often get what you pay for. So comparing LED bulb makers that use known high quality chips means you will usually be paying more. And if an LED bulb doesn't list the chip it uses, and it's usually a no-name Chinese or Taiwanese chip. Once you have decided to group LED bulbs into UL or not, reputable chip maker or not, a good way then to compare the value of an LED bulb is to calculate its lumens per dollar. How many lumens does it produce and how much does it cost? Say an LED bulb is 400 lumens and costs $20. That equates to 20 lumens per dollar. I find this a good way to compare value between all LED bulbs out there. Apples for apples. An important thing to know that I haven't mentioned yet is will the LED bulb last as long as it says it does? This isn't easy to know and to be sure of. For an LED bulb claiming to last 50,000 hours, no actual manufacturer has tested any light bulb for 50,000 hours. I can't give you any real way to figure out how, but it's helpful to at least know three things that are the most important to an LED bulb's lifespan. One, the temperature of the chip and the driver is operated at. The design of the LED bulb and importantly the heat sink used to draw heat away from the LED chip and LED driver is central for its lifespan. Low attempts for both chip and driver mean longer lifetime and even though LEDs run cool, much cooler than incandescent and CFLs, for LEDs the cooler the better. LED bulbs and fridges will last nearly forever. 2. LED chip that is used. The real reason Cree and other good chip makers are better is because their chips last longer in higher temperatures. 3. LED driver being used. The LED driver usually sits at the base of the LED bulb and converts the raw electricity into something the LED can use to light up. Better LED driver manufacturers make drivers that last longer in higher temps. Of course there are plenty of other factors that can differentiate the value of LED bulbs from each other, but in my opinion they shouldn't be as heavily weighted as those above like Energy Star and Lighting Facts, check out part 10 in our series. Color Rendering Index, the higher the better, check out part 8 in our series. Color Temperature and Beam Angle, you have to get the right bulb for the job. Check out parts 8 and 9. That's it for our 12 part introduction series. I hope you all found it helpful and I'll see you next time.